Hello everyone, this is T55 and welcome back to Bottoms Up! We continue from where we ended last time. So this guy points with the knife to the hangar where the scruffy leather shoes in question were hanging by the laces. Simultaneously, however, the door beside it opened with a bang. Into the poop came Arthur Hoodin, nuts gently by Godry and the blacksmith. We are bringing. Okay, okay. Oh. We are bringing him by Spiller. Talus piping voice squeaked. The massive innkeeper rounded the bar with difficulty, ordering as he did so. Make him comfortable, gentlemen. Make him comfortable, gentlemen. Oh, now there's so many people. The two hasty pushed the noose out of his head and forced out on to sit there. Noose, get out of there, bro. <laughs> he fell onto the chair, barely stopping himself from groaning. Right. Beca began the innkeeper. I almost forgot to say good morning to you, Houdin. At that moment, the old warrior was still looking at the dragon. Hey, bro. And soon as he entered and caught sight of him, he was surprised that his friend paid him no attention. Oh, Yeah, I, I, I am introvert, but I'm not that big of an introvert. I want my friend to... Talk with me. I wanted you to come here because I have a special job for you. Houdin finally turned to Mo Mauser. Thank you, Master Meyer, but I'm unlikely to be inclined to accept your offer. For some time now, as you know, I have been indulging in a well-deserved rest. You mean laziness, bro. Hearing this, Piro took another step towards him. Did it sound like a proposal to you? He growled. Did it sound like a proposal to you? It doesn't matter whether you want to or not. You are the only one from here to Gridic who can handle such a task, so you're going to make an effort. Otherwise, consider that by tomorrow I've taken not only the roof over her, your head, but the clothes of your hump as well. Oh, you wanna fight me, Mauza? I, I would place my bets on, on Houdin because he's uh, um, older than you. Houdin didn't care about th that to wreck at all. Not to mention that no one in his life had managed to intimidate him in any way. Yeah, go, Houdin! However, he felt he undoubtedly had to at least find out what was going on, mostly because the Lago still looked like a stuffed <laughs> animal. He glanced at him again quickly. Spiridon smiled slightly. Apparently, he had decided that his words held chilled the heart of the senile old man. Good. His expression became even more serious. <laughs> and I'm making him sing Comaga. Now I will try to explain to you what this is about. You are probably familiar with the numerous cases of theft and other mischief that have been committed indiscriminately in these places for a long time. Well, there is no way you aren't. After all, it's no secret that most people in the area entrust their problems of this nature to you, and I usually learn of your exploits in their aid from random rumors that reads me. Okay. This should not be happening, Houdin. Uh huh, so um, he exploits their eight. 
I'm, I'm not sure what. It is the vice mayor who should take the initiative. Then go do it yourself, bro. Why are you even waking me up, bro? Like, go do your own thing. And for that to happen, the villagers must report everything to my grace first. Then leave me alone. That's what I want, bro. That's what Hoodin wants. I, I say want because I, because I think Hoodin is the main, main character. Anyway. I agree, Atheron shook his head, in any case you are right, to some of my acqu acqu acquaintances from the village and from the neighboring villagers have sought me out quite a few times but only for information. And are you sure it's really Marox? If that's what you told everyone? Houdin didn't even flinch. I think so, based on the descriptions of the thieves. Thefts. However, you are clearly wrong. The innkeeper swept with his eyes the other people in the room. For some time, you excuse me, but I began to suspect that your proper judgment may be long gone. And here's what came out in the end. I was right. I hope this is at least something close to a bass, powerful bass voice. And as soon as the last words reach his ear, the warriors revered from head to toe. Good thing Spiro was explaining too excitedly to notice. Yes! If I knew from earlier what you told people, I would have taken action. But that's not important anymore. Especially after the much scarier truth came to light. After each sentence, the deputy mayor grew redder and now he clenched his fists. <laughs> and I make him sink almost. The, pe pe the pe perpetrator of this in inequities is obviously a completely different creature. Much more evil and ten times more insidious. I'm talking to you about a living dead. An Ustel. Oh no. Oh no, no, no. They know. They know. They know. Who didn't kill them all? Even Drago, if, if he doesn't promise to set up. Drops of cold sweat were already beating on Arterion's winklet forehead. My grandma used to tell me about them. The news called unexpectedly. You can become one where you were so bad enough you are not wanted even on the other side. Damn. That is why the corpses of the most dangerous criminals are buried deep in the ground or thrown with a stone around their necks at the bottom of some lake. I see. Or they leave them at the crossroads. Godly added passionately. So they can't find their way if they wake up. Yeah, the crossroads is one in four chances. Houdin felt it was about time to say something, but only managed to compose a relatively coherent sentence after a few seconds. Well... Then... That sounds pretty impossible if you ask me. There are indeed reports of about the existence of such creatures, but so far no evidence has been found. I, of course, have never met them. So, I am fully convinced that they are nothing more than a legend. Yes, but the story of what happened last night, so, so the voice. Spiridon lifted his chin a bit, pointing towards the dragon. Our poor neighbor was visiting Steam Gun's house. The two were just having a drink when... Uh, one drink, so so. When the windmaker went to the basement and then upstairs. But Ranger put suspiciously wrong. Apparently just then the 
Ustel was about to commit another theft, but Steam Gun unfortunately turned to be a hidden this time. When he never came back, the other went looking for him to check where he was lost. He followed him upstairs where I heard him from the stairs! Jago himself suddenly picked up the story. Everyone fixed him with startled looks. Ismail was definitely pleased that his cousin had just spoken without being under the influence of strong poisons. On the other hand, Hudin continued to look horrified. As if they were talking about something. Or maybe that's how it seemed, I don't know. But then... It was like a sack of grain swamped to the floor. I immediately ran to the end of the staircase and then I saw it. <gasps> Steam Go was lying in the room and that one... That one thing was standing over him. No oh my god. It had a hideous look and its face. The stony dead face. Then the peasant felt silent and stared blankly again, but this time at the table. Spiro waited a moment to see if he would continue with the story, but when nothing followed, he said in turn, he doesn't remember what happened next, except that the killer escaped through the window. And the Lagu seems to have screamed before he passed out because some of Steam Gun's neighbors hurt him. They notified me immediately and a short time later we brought one of the mourners to take care of the body. Oh no. Arterion propped his head up with his trembling hand. He definitely needed to think this out too, but it was too difficult at the moment. There is, there is nothing more to discuss about what happened. Now you know everything we know, Maozar snorted wildly. But you don't need more anyway. You will find the revived Slayer and remove him. The old man answered nothing. I wish you good luck on behalf of everyone in the village. And Inkeeper tapped him quite, quite hard on the back with his heavy palm. The warrior barely forced himself to, to shake his head in the affirmation, then rose slowly from his chair. He started walking to the door without looking back. Most of the others followed him with glances as he walked out, leaving it open. And then, for the first time in his life, Houdin felt exactly as they saw him. A haggard old man with a bright resembling his worn chainmail. He still owned it, but it no longer served him for anything. Only it was heavy, even more than before it seems. I see. Over time the Scarlet Glow had become a secret means of communication between Houdin and his friend. According to an agreement made long ago between the two, when wolves saw the lamp lit, it meant that the old man wanted to speak to him and was to appear at the house as soon as possible. This usually happened the same or the next evening at the latest. Houdin himself wasn't quite sure how the boy always managed to answer his calls. 
so quickly maybe because uh, while he looks and sees and sees and sees in the dark and it suddenly blinds him a little bit that right even though he sometimes left the village for days at a time but he had never asked he didn't feel it necessary to know absolutely everything about him besides he didn't keep track of his transactions and avoided asking exactly where he had acquired this or that how he knew was that raves usually prepared for the next delivery around one or two new moons so sometimes around the big holidays the orders became more frequent okay what what are those deliveries can the villagers just do some of the things themselves like i don't know during this time he wandered far and wide hiding in obscure places and occasionally sneaking unnoticed to the mill to stock up the newly acquired goods i see the mill this time the warrior wanted to give a slight different message to his friend so he waited until the last light of the day became began to fade and unhooked the lantern from the beam then baited in the unusual looking light he ambled down the dusty courtyard path and out into the street turn it past the opposite barn the old veteran knew the way well he had walked a dozen sta- of times not before long the the ramsacred house and yards were left behind uh-huh so he says follow me bro here a wide field of pumpkins appeared on his path Hudin decided to go straight through but was still careful not to step on any of them further on he found himself at the beginning of a vast grassy area one of several pastures that stretched around the village i'm i'm sad for the winemaker to the left the blackish gray shadow of the forest could be made out on the opposite side the ground level was beginning to rise and in the distance it rose to several small hills the one in the middle being much larger than the others at its top was located on an old fountain flanked by a several large smooth stones and protected by the crown of a single tree that grew high next to it Hudin strode right over and a moment later he was considering whether he should relax on the edge of the fountain's basin after long thought and frowning however he realized what a mistake he was about to make so he stayed upright and just laid the lamp on the ice cold stone for the next few minutes he gradually gazed at the village because actually that was all that could be seen in this darkness he had concentrated so much that he was unable to detect elves footsteps when he came very close to the hill now they're gonna fight or something Arteron was aware that the young man had followed him here if not all the way at least most of it he had even counted on it for that man he could be sure that other far rescued at sneaky people had not done so aha so the boy would see them yeah The boy climbed the step slope, the steep slope, and, and stood next to Houdin without saying anything, looking where he had been staring this whole time. F- 
From this height the village seemed a bit like a pile of wooden waste overgrown with vegetation and shrouded in bluish, bluish mist. Here and there a red orange light flickered to dispel the darkness. At this time of year the day had begun to grow shorter and most of the people went to bed early. Either way, they could hardly find anything to do after sundown. It was obvious, however, that one of the few buildings still growing was undoubtedly the pub. A fine night, eh? Wolf's voice cut through the silence like a knife. What's so fine about it? Chilly moonless and the wind is even howling unpleasantly enough. Exactly why it suits me. One, on nights like this there are fewer living people like you strolling around. Now there will be one less few bro. <laughs> Uh, Tron was too nervous to appreciate this, the dog, but even if he wasn't, he'd hardly laugh since he hadn't done that in years. Still, at least he could have reacted some other way, but he didn't. Well, even that wasn't going to help me avoid yesterday's events. Nothing still. Rose turned his gaze away from the village. To avoid freezing near the sea on that hill, why don't you just ask me more quickly if I actually killed st Steam Gun? Odin flinched almost unnoticeably, but then calmly lifted his shoulders. Alright then. Did you kill him, bro? I'm asking you. Was it you? Despite the tense moment, the benign tone of his voice conveyed an iron composer that seemed to calm the young man's anxiety, which only a moment ago had made its first appearance. I didn't kill anyone. Look, I'll tell you exactly what happened. I hope at least you can find some logic in this story because I haven't stopped trying since it happened, but I haven't gotten any results yet. Hudin gave Rice an encouraging look, so he continued. Another flashback, cool. In the evening, as I told you, I went to steal some wine. Oh my god. From the, from the, 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 the not the cheap, but the, the expensive one, won't you bro? After sneaking into Steam Gun's yard, I of course tried the back do door of the house first. However, I gave up because the latch was down and there was no point in screwing with the lock. Okay. Then I saw that one of the upstairs windows was open. It's going to be a hard job, I said to myself. Normally, I wouldn't even try to get to the cellar from there, however, previously I had heard croaking coming from the house, so I figured Steam Gun had a guest. I couldn't make out any more voices except the two, and by the wildness of their calling, I could tell they had obviously been guzzing for a long time. They couldn't have been more distracted. And knowing how they usually continue until morning, I had to take a chance. Oh. After hesitating for a good while, I finally climbed the beams and was just throwing my legs over the ledge of the window when a cow coughed stem gun lying a few feet away from me. Oh. That's too bad, bro. It definitely didn't look like he had decided to just lie down on the floor. 
clearly he had been drinking, but it couldn't have been just that. It was because of the nasty new wine, I am pretty sure. His body had taken an old shape from the wine, and his face was too pale. I decided to get closer to anyway to see if he was breathing. A moment after, I determined that his heart wasn't beating. I heard hurried footsteps. And before I could get far enough away from the corpse, Drago flew onto the floor like an angry giant wasp. As soon as he caught a glimpse of me through the door of the room, he came running towards me, shouting or rather grunting unintelligibly. I was just jumping back outside when he stepped on some dropped jerk roaring on the floor. I see. He staggered and I think fell back down the stairs, but I saw nothing more for I was already siding on the tiles of the set. That's all. The elderly warrior listened to his narrative without interrupting and after the end stood thoughtful for a long time, still stroking his golden white beard. Was he hurt? He asked at the last. No. Or at least not visibly. Visibly. There was no blood or any sign of an assault. Why didn't they let me see the body, bro? Still, I don't remember much details. You know what? Maybe he was stuck by some kind of magic. Stuck. Yeah. It's possible. Unfortunately, however, there is no way to verify this thesis. Suddenly, who didn't remember one seemingly quite important detail, which somehow he had not been brought up until now. Drago was saying this morning that before he saw you, he heard Steam Gun's voice. By the way, yours as well. Leaves seemed startled, although that was hardly clear because of his frozen death expression. Is that right? Yes. I think he even said that there was a conversation. He got confused. Horror can blur memories like nothing else. I will agree, the old man said after her soul pause. Besides, in addition to the fact that Drago was drunk when all this happened, while he was telling the story, Spiro had stuffed him with all kinds of things. He looked more lifeless even than you. <laughs> Houdin shook his head with a groan, for his neck had begun to stiffen. The most important question remains, who would want to eliminate Steam Gun? But he was just a screwed, shrewd and calculating man, protecting his craft. What makes him different from the rest of the people in the village? Raves sighted woefully. Damned if I know. I mean, it's very strange indeed. But if you ask me, no one but the two of us would even think about it. No doubt everyone is now convinced that it was I who killed the winemaker. I wouldn't be surprised if they've already sent someone to track me down. Yes, me. At this moment, Hurin defi definitely felt uncomfortable to say the least, but he was still obliged to speak the, tru the truth. I don't know if this is good news or bad news, but that someone is me. A brief awkward silence for the reason for which was not the strange sounding qualification. For Reyes and Hurin, nothing seemed so unusual anymore. They were just currently racking their brains to figure out together how best to handle the situation at hand. The young man said something first. You think they are watching your house? That's why you brought me here, huh? 
I doubt it. I know that Pyro doesn't trust me one bit, but I don't think he'd resort to such measures. Just in case. If they see me out in the middle of the night, it's not pro it's no problem. I even have my, my excuse. But if they notice someone coming to pay me a midnight visit and that someone looks like you, then we'll be screwed. Yeah, since everyone already knows you've been having a hard time to relating guests lately, it d would definitely be suspicious. Okay, okay, sorry. So I guess I'll have to disappear for a while. And it will be nice to really disappear this time, not as usual. Gotcha! I'll take cover in the woods until at least the first snow. We were about to be temporarily done with trade anyway, wouldn't we? Hmm, I wish in that case that at least one of these people, but whatever. I'll deal with them later. What about you? What are you gonna do in the meantime? Pretend you're looking for me? Ha! You know what? You might not have to. Kudin eyed the boy questioning it old bed bedatedly. I think I just figured out how we can get out of this. The old man secretly prayed that the plan would look good to him. If they want you to find me and kill me, you do just that. The warrior quite quickly sensed what his friend had in mind, but immediately found this plan more than unreliable. And he wasn't even quite sure why. Rose, I can guess what you're suggesting, but... There is no other way. They just won't leave you alone if you don't do it. Look, haven't we done this so many times? You're gonna kill me, only this time you're gonna sell my body to the mayor. I have killed, uh, Houdin has killed Rose a lot of times, okay. And when he decides the task is done, all the fools will be over. Then you'll revive me after a while, like always, and voila! Oh. I'll even be able to fix the deal with them while I'm dead. Who's you? Okay. If I'm persuasive enough, we won't lose any customers as well. Arturon suddenly felt very dizzy and grabbed his head. His hands were shaking more than ever from the nerves and on top of that he hadn't tricked a drop of threats week today. Oh no, not the threats week not being tricked. Why is not why not just run away like we've been doing for years? If you're not coming back, why do you care if you set the road on fire? That's that's a good uh, that's a good phrase. Wasn't that what you used to say? We'll find another village as far away from here as possible. Suitable options are dwindling, but we'll be fine. So I'm not even gonna say bye to them. I'll steal back for the roof over my head and. Sure, we can do it. However, I don't think we should. I can see that of all the places we once hit like uh, warriors, you like it best here, Hoodin. It's been so long since I've seen you exchange more than a few words with anyone but me. It's about time you took care of your life too. At least it's real. I'm not sure if the last thing you said is entirely true, but the point is... A few feet away from them, the berry gurgling spout of the fountain suddenly hissed wildly, causing both of them to shoot glances in that direction, for the noise sounded rather unexpected in the silence of the night. Ah, fine, the old man almost growled as he turned again. If you suggest it, that's what we'll do. He would never admit it, but a little while ago, as he described the possibility of escape among other thoughts, appeared the desire to drag that oh so comfortable rocking chair on which he dozed peacefully every day down the unknown long roads that awaited them. Ah yes, the laziness to be 
to have on that tail, yes. Le leave smile to sight and said. As if you don't always agree with my stupid ideas. To... But still, this must be your stupidest one yet. As it seems, we'll find out soon enough. The old man tried to smile too, but only managed to curl his lip. Then he bent down to pick up his lantern, which had already warmed the edge of the stone basin so slightly. He turned back to Wolves and asked hurriedly, Do you think we should do it here and now? The young man looked around briefly. The place seems appropriate to me. In that case, get ready to go. Arturon separately stretched forward the hand with which he held the lamb. Oh no, we're gonna kill him now, bro. The flame inside thrust stronger, then immediately changed color and became yellowish golden like the sun at noon. It's just a pity I can't take the goods with me. Wolf said, trying to not look, trying not to look at the light gushing against him. I would have done at least some of the work between the other things. Odin didn't even acknowledge his concerns. He was trying hard to do the magic right, even though it was one of the main spells all the health hail rats used. The young man could feel how the fire locked in a metal cage began, so to speak, to gain strength. Realizing quite clearly what was coming next, he took a few steps back. Pudding or wolves? Anyway, the girl seemed to be trying to physically push him away. He was already standing to resist the force even from his this distance, and perhaps as a distraction he reached into the right pocket of his robes. He touched something uh, elongated and greasy. And just then Houdin stepped forward, <coughs> waved the lantern at him and shouted. Peregre Abio! The flame chased an arc in the air, evoking what looked like a wave of pulsing, sparkling rays. Well, at least I bring them the winded sausages, that was the last thing that crossed Wolf's head before the collision. Aha, uh -huh, yes, the sausages, that's the best thing. The spell hit him hard. He flew back, fell on his back and did not move again. Houdin immediately approached him and looked over. The light of the lantern had turned red again and no longer shone with such power. The dead man's body seemed completely unharmed and that reassured him, apart from the fact that there were whips of steam rising from his clothes here and there. Still, it was what supposed to be. The spell was targeting the soul, not the material. Obviously, Houdin had nothing more to do than report the successful capture of the Ustel. Wow, how he did it in one night, wow. And that could definitely wait until morning. There was certainly no danger of the corpse being found by some random traveler, at least not so soon. Okay, someone will find the body. I, 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 I say it. Even in the daytime, this place was rarely passed by anyone. The old man walked br briskly down the hill and headed for his house. Being outdoors on such chilly nights always made his stomach, stomach ache. It was about time he warmed it up inside with something that would definitely be longer than tea. Well, thank you everyone for watching this episode as well. We surely, surely have an interesting story here. This is an element. Anyway. Is holding here?
I don't think he is dead. Oh, uh, is that him? That I don't know. Anyway, thank you everyone for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Like and subscribe, please.